Hey everybody, today is December 24th and I wanted to give you guys a quick update of my Zone 9 Central Florida garden this fall. We do have some sunflowers that are finally opening up in the background. As you can see, one peeking through. We have a couple other that are just starting to open. Um, you can see their blooms coming through, but we are expecting a frost tonight and today it's like 80 degrees i'm actually wearing a christmas sweater just for this video um but it is actually hot i'm starting to sweat already um, so I, as i go through my garden i'm going to share with you what i plan on covering and how i um, will set up tinting each plant and vegetables for this freeze this evening so i hope um, along the way i will encourage you to get out and grow some food and also teach you some things about how to cover your plants for if this is the first time you are joining me on my gardening channel, I wanted to welcome you. If you want to learn more about gardening in Central Florida or in Zone 9A or B, um, here is a garden for you to watch through the seasons grow. I update you on how the garden is growing, the struggles that I'm going through, different things I'm trying throughout each season for spring and fall and I do plan on putting out a series of what to plant and when each month of this coming year. So I hope you guys uh, stay tuned to that. I'm gonna try really hard on uh, working on making sure I post a video each month to show you what I'm planting and what you also can plant for this zone. So over here is my smaller garden and I have about 1100 square feet total in my backyard we also have a food forest and a front yard orchard so this is just our back yard garden where we have our entertaining area we like to enjoy um, looking at the garden and also entertaining out here but here's my bed of lettuce we have some butter crunch and romaine our romaine recently went to seed so we're actually just gonna kind of let that be um, maybe harvest a few throw it to our chickens but last night I harvested a lot of this butter crunch for our family and we've been harvesting a ton of fresh salads out of here. Um, here's our bok choy, which is just so beautiful. This is the first year I've ever grown bok choy. Um, in this garden, in this side of the garden, it's we probably only get three to four hours of sunlight and everything is just thriving over in this area. But look at that bok choy. And if anybody has some cool bok choy recipes, please let me know. Um, I have never used it in the kitchen, so I want to uh, learn how to use that. So please drop that information below in the comments. We've got some kale over here. We have some mint hanging and some thyme. Over here is our strawberry tower, which is looking pretty rough, but we do have lots of little blooms through here, some strawberries coming in. I've just got to clean it up a little bit. Over here's our rattlesnake bean vine, which I have to show you what, how cool these things are. Check this out. I've never grown rattlesnake beans before, but they are just loving up on this old rusty uh, shovel I have here. Over here, we've got some carrots and radishes. We've been harvesting the radishes and putting them in our salads as they um, grow. This year, they're kind of growing funky. They're a little more stringy on the top here, as I can show you. Um, a lot of them, these are called French radishes. They're a little longer. Um, so they're not all perfect, but we still eat them. We just throw what we can into our salads. So those are doing really great. Here's my eggplants, which I do plan on covering our eggplants. Um, what I've done is I've put a stake here in the middle, and what I'm going to do is drape um, old bed sheets basically over them. We do have some bisqueen, which my husband uses on concrete jobs, which will be I'll be showing you where I'm going to be using that because it's a much bigger um, unit. And I'm not sure if I'll be covering my bok choy. I believe this is the bok choy is, is uh, frost tolerant. I'm not gonna worry about my romaine or my um, butter crunch just because they are getting to the end of their lives here. I do have some other salad over there in the other part of the garden, which I'll show you that I do plan on covering, but uh, don't make the same mistake I made by not 
tinting, which means at least keeping the cloth away from your plants. Because if you let the cloth lay on top of your plants, if as that ice or frost lays in, it will damage your um, plant. Um, as you are going through, which I will put a list in the uh, description below of what plants that you want to cover. So over here, this is just an old rusty um, water trough my husband brought home. Somebody was actually throwing away, which I made a raised garden bed out of. We recently planted some uh, different types of lettuces through here. Since this is so small um, and they're not doing is just putting a stick in the middle here and bringing all of my succulent plants. Don't forget about your beautiful succulents. Um, and then just putting a whole sheet over this area um, as well as my other succulent tower here. I'm just going to throw a sheet over top of it to make it easy. I'm not going to put these all and merge them. I'm just going to throw a sheet over it. Um, also your herbs. It's smart to just go ahead and cover them. Um, as you can see my basil has already had some frost damage in the past. So even if you are in an area where it's forecast for say 36, it's possible you can get frost. Um, I've made the mistake in the past where I had a forecast for 36 and we're out in the boonies and it dipped into 34 to 33 and I had some frost um, damage on my plants. So if you're even close by a couple degrees, don't trust that weatherman and make sure you get out there, spend the time to um, cover your plants. So I'm certainly going to be covering our squash and zucchini even though it looks really rough. This is the longest I've been able to keep our frost and zucchini alive and the most successful season I've had so far. Um, we still have a lot of flowers that are opening up. We had a lot of rain come through, which um, we had some uh, damage to fungus and different things. We've had lots of trouble with um, worms. We've been spraying constantly with BT. Thankfully, we're, we've been able to bring a lot of these vegetables unharmed into the kitchen. And even if we do get one that has gotten a bug on it, we just cut the end off where the bug is and eat the rest. So um, these are doing really good as, as far as <laughs> what they can be doing. Here we've got some more beans and I staggered my beans this year so we could have fresh beans all through um, the winter. I will be covering these and basically what I'm gonna do, you can use anything that you have laying around the house like shovels. I'm gonna stick a shovel in on both end and maybe some sticks at the end and just kind of throw some sheets over this area. Uh, tomatoes are very, very, very sensitive to frost in very cool weather. So same here, we're gonna cover these and um, I'm just gonna put stakes and whatever sticks I have. If you have bamboo that's available to you, um, that's free, you don't have to spend a whole lot of money on that. Um, definitely can snip off a few of those, throw them in the ground, and create some kind of A-frame to where you're not letting your uh, sheets touch your plants. So these tomato plants actually look healthier than they ever have before. Um, I think that's a testimonial to building our soil over the years um, with organic matter and this heavy uh, tree clippings as mulch. Unfortunately, my sunflowers are way too big to cover, but look at how beautiful these guys are. They are towering over me. We had one open recently. Sunflowers should be fine with a mild frost. Hard freeze, you may lose some of the leaves, but we're just gonna see. We'll give you an update, let you know how these guys do after our low temperatures. That one is getting way big. In this row here, I have some peppers that I'm growing, different varieties. I've got these really cool purple peppers. They're spicy. Basically just be putting anything I possibly can find, just steaks and throwing sheets over these. And if you guys have time, try to, try to get out before sunset and start uh, covering your plants. Um, you can spray your plants 
with water if you have overhead uh, water. Even in drip system, if you turn your drip on, it can um, help with keeping your ground uh, cooler. I'm sorry, keeping your ground warmer. But because today is so hot and my mulch has had time to warm up, if I can keep that heat in and under my sheets and my bisqueen, then that's going to be much helpful for my plants than spraying them with water. I wanted to show you guys how good my tomatoes are doing. Here we go. You see that guy? Over here I've got my kohlrabi growing. We've been harvesting a lot of kohlrabi and uh, we just take it into the kitchen, slice it up, eat it raw with salt. But if any of you guys have any good recipes, please share them in the comments below. I always love sharing uh, different recipes with people. I would love to continue doing more of my cooking series. And if you're interested in seeing any of those videos, there's not a whole lot there, but um, I do have a playlist that you can look at for inspiration. And here's our rows of carrots and our kids have been harvesting a lot of carrots. Whenever we, they come home from school and they're hungry, I tell them you gotta eat your vegetables first before you can have any other snacks. So they come out here, they find the biggest carrots, they see who can pick the biggest carrots. And um, as you can see, some, <laughs> there's a lot of different um, pieces of carrots that are left uh, just laying here, but it's super fun for them to come out here. They really enjoy it. If you guys wanna see more pictures of our family harvesting food, what I'm bringing into the kitchen and how I'm using it in the kitchen, uh, you definitely want to follow me on Instagram because I do post a lot of stories of the food that I'm bringing into the kitchen and what I'm doing with it. Um, so I do have some Brussels sprouts, which I do not plan on covering. My Swiss chard is doing really good. I do not plan on covering that either. And some more Brussels sprouts. My Brussels sprouts are not doing that great. I've really never had any great success with them. Um, so if you guys have any tips for me on growing Brussels sprouts, that would be wonderful. Over here I've got some zinnias and some loofah plants. Here's our little kids play area, my workshop area. So over in this area here, I've got collard greens, cabbage, more cabbage. I've kind of altered or alternated purple cabbage, green cabbage. I do not plan on covering any of this. I'm just going to let it be. Same with my broccoli that I have in this row. I have some onions, then I have regular kale, then I have dazzling blue kale. I also have some more broccoli. The only thing I plan on covering in this side of the garden is my tomatoes that I have right here. And again, I'm just gonna make a tent. Actually, I really don't have to make a whole lot of tent because I've got these poles here that I have my tomato plants staked on. Look at that guy. That's pretty. But everything in this garden is thriving as well. We're harvesting lots of kale. We're putting it in soups. I'm using my seminal pumpkins, which are pretty much on their way out. We only have a few left in our pumpkin patch in the front. And at this point, it's too big to even worry about covering. Over here, I've got some purple beans that are doing really good. I will be covering my beans. And over in this area, we have yard beans, which have been super fun to grow. Um, I don't really get to bring a ton of these into the kitchen because the kids will come and pick them and eat them raw. So next year, I really want to grow more of these yard beans. Here's some blooms and blueberries from our blueberry plants. We have about 50 plants that wrap our entire garden area. They are starting to produce, produce for the second time this year. We get uh, two harvests, one in the spring and one in the fall. So here's a little glimpse of all of our fruit trees and our citrus trees along with our uh, front yard orchard, which we have out in this area here. This is where we also have our pumpkin patch. But tonight we will put on our sprinklers and let them run. Um, 
we have been harvesting a lot of Myers lemons, which I'm going to show you this tree right now just because it's so pretty to look at. We've been using that for um, different recipes and also for our favorite, which is our Myers lemon uh, tea or Myers lemonade. So we do plan on running the sprinklers on all of this in hopes that it will survive. If you guys want to see a full food forest tour, I will link that in the description below so you can check out and see what type of trees we have. And um, I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see y'all soon.